Welcome to the Kill Shot MMA podcast for UFC Vegas 96, Cannoneer versus Bahio. It's your boy Monk for DFS Army, and I am going solo today. Sniper is on vacation. Hope he's having a hell of a time. And I tell you what, he picked one hell of a week to go on vacation. Uh, actually, it's going to help me and you out because this show might only take about 30 minutes, give or take 10 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Right now, we have 10 fights for this card. Um, one and yeah, uh, we lost one. Sorry, I lost what I was going to say. We lost one. We lost the Silva fight. So we'll drop it down to nine. But then we have the two tough finales going on. One's Ryan Loader and Robert Valentin. The other has yet to be decided as it's going to be uh, fought, I believe, tomorrow night. So as of now, we have 10 fights. It's basically a shit show of a week. Um, so tread carefully with your DFS picks this week. But that said, I will try to read off some stats and give you guys as much knowledge as I possibly can give. Uh, like I said, we have like 10 fights. One of them I have no stats for. It's the the one tough finale fight. One of them is Kong Wang against Leonardo, who, I mean, how much of a breakdown do we need there? And the other one is probably Zach Reese and Jose Medina. How much of a breakdown do you need there? So we might only be going through the numbers for about seven fights, but either way, we are going to go through the numbers. So without further ado, actually before the further ado, we have some further ado. Hit the like, hit the sub on the DFS Army channel and be sure to check out dfsarmy.com and figure out how how I mean not even figure out just see how much money you can make and how much you can save by signing up so be sure to do that and now without further ado let's get right into it I don't know how I'm going to work these screens today I'm going to leave this screen up and I guess I'll try to navigate through uh we'll just leave this up whatever not a big deal first fight of the night I think we have uh Kong Wang, yes, no, I did not make that up. Uh, against Victoria Leonardo, sixty six hundred for Leonardo, cheapest fighter on the card. That makes Kong Wang ninety six hundred, the most expensive uh, fighter on the card. Not something we really want to look forward to playing, especially with a uh, debuting fighter. She does have Kong Wang. I mean, does have a DWCS fight. She's only got five pro fights. One of them is this DWCS fight against Paula Luna. She landed six strikes a minute. I mean, the, the fight only lasted three minutes. She landed a takedown, controlled her opponent for 90% of three minutes, and then submitted her. So we don't really get much uh, from that. Excuse me. And the Victoria Leonardo, uh, she's one in three in the UFC. Her only win is over the bum, Mandy Baum. She lost to Manon Fioro, no shame in that, Melissa Gatto, Natalia Silva. So her, her strength of schedule is actually pretty good with the exception of that Mandy Baum fight. But, I mean, she's out here getting KO'd in the first round, KO'd in the second round, and KO'd in the second round in her three losses. So I think it's safe to say Kong Wang will be searching for a finish here at 9,600. And I know I said this last week about uh, old boy Tom Nolan at 9,800. It was probably worth it. And then look what happens against the dude in Alex Reyes. It goes to decision. He scores like 14 points in a win. It was ridiculous. So play Kong Wang at your own risk. Um, we are dealing, like I said, with, I think a 10 fight card, maybe 11 once the other fights announced. Um, but 9,600, it's not 98. You could probably get her in there. She's probably going to finish Leonardo. Uh, what's Leonardo's takedown defense. I've already talked about this way longer than I should have. Uh, she allowed one against Gatto and even one against man and Fioro. So Kong Wang's going to take her down and look for that submission. So, yeah, it's Kong Wang is the pick. I just don't know. I mean, I'm going to play her. I played old boy at 9,800 last week, so I'm going to play her at 9,600. Next fight, Jacqueline Cavalcanti taking on uh, Josiane Nunes, everyone's favorite shortest fighter with the longest. This girl is five foot two with a 67 inch reach. And I think they shaved a couple inches off that reach. I think it's more like a 70 inch reach personally. Uh, Orthodox versus Southpaw here. Cavalcanti is one and oh in the UFC. Nunes is three and oh in the UFC. Both women have beat Zara Farron. Congratulations. I mean, that's fantastic. I mean, kudos to you. Both of them scored 80 points, basically. Well, Nunes scored 75 in that win, and Cavalcanti put up 80. She landed eight strikes a minute, but did nothing else. This is the Israel Adesanya type of stat line where it's 126 strikes landed, so you're getting points for stri uh, significant strikes and total strikes, but literally nothing else happened. There's no grappling. There's no takedowns. There's not even a, an iota of control time. Well, maybe one iota, but... That doesn't account for much. So at 9,400, which was her salary last time, 
And I think is it her and oh no, she's eighty five hundred this week. Um, so she do get a nine hundred dollar discount. But what is this going to look like against Nunes? Nunes isn't probably going to get finished if I had to guess. Um, half of Jacqueline's wins have gone to decision. And let's see, all both of Nunes' losses have gone to decision as well. So um, I do expect Cavalcanti to probably win. I mean, like I said, she looked good striking, but for DraftKings, that does not do anything for us. I mean, all that work, 8.4 strikes a minute looks fantastic, but when you end up with 80 points, and you're 9,400, that's not going to look great. Even if you end up with 80 points at 8,500 with, you know, 20, 22 fighters on the card, that's not the best look either. So I think this one probably goes to decision, and Nunez isn't cheap enough for me to really want to play her. I mean, she's looked good against, check this, Bea Malecki, Ramona Pasqual, and Zara Farron. Like, we're not going to put a lot of stock into that. The strength of schedule is absolute dog shit, according to the number. So I'm not expecting a finish. I will play some of Cavalcanti at 8,500, but Nunez, I'm not really too interested in that as I expect this one to be a decision, like I said. So give me Cavalcanti. I'll play some of her, but Nunez, not too interested in at 7,700. Next fight, guys, we are cruising. Uh, everybody's favorite dancer, Vyacheslav Borchev, a.k.a. Slava Claus, taking on, don't call me James Yon Lontop, call me Yamas Yontop. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce I'm, I honestly have no idea. I'm going to go with Yontop. Uh, 8,700 for Slava Claus, 75 for Yontop. Now, Yontop's only fought once in the UFC. He lost his debut as a minus 460 favorite against Chris Padilla. I know everybody was on Yontop that week. I think he was like 9,300, something crazy. Uh, high like that for his debut. I know Padilla was super cheap. Um, and he ended up finishing Yontop in the very first round. Now, he did land four strikes a minute, but he got taken down three times and controlled for 30% of four and a half minutes, basically. So the three takedowns landed is a problem for me, but did I mention he's fighting Vyacheslav Borshev? There will be no takedowns uh, attempted from Borshev unless we're in the upside down world at this point, but I don't think that we are because um, I'm still hot as hell in Texas, and if that's the case, I'd have a coat on right now. So I don't think he's going for takedowns. Um, if he does, hell might freeze over, and I might actually need a coat. So this should be a, a, a striking affair, at least from the Borchev side. Can you trust him, man? I mean, he's won three and one in his last five. He's lost to uh, Mark D. One Casey, who will, who uh, landed eleven takedowns, followed by Mike Davis, who landed nine takedowns, followed by Chase Hooper, who landed one. And uh, I mean, Borchev did nothing against Chase Hooper in eight minutes. This dude didn't even score one. Draft Kings point in eight minutes, guys. Eight minutes, 0.83 points. Excuse me. He landed two significant strikes and he had 0.21% control time in eight minutes. Nothing. So I don't know what we're going to get. Borchev is really uh, a banger bust type fighter. He definitely has the power um, to, to put you down. And Yontop, you know, didn't get, you know, knocked out. He did get subbed. Um, but yeah, play a little, play some of Borchev but play it like it's a risky play because it is. I don't know if I'm touching this one in cash, at least on the Borshev side. Maybe I'll have some of Yontop at 7,500. I think he's also very safe to play in uh, in GPPs. Look, you're, you're not going to win with both sides of this one. If you have one, you know, the winner's probably going to look great and the loser's probably going to score, you know, 0.83 points. You know, it might be pretty bad. So play both sides, but don't expect uh, to have decent numbers. Don't expect the loser to put up like 50 points. I personally would not. So I'm probably, I don't know. It's Tuesday. It's still early. As of this podcast, I'll pick Borshev because I want to see the dance. But honestly, this could be a 50-50 fight. Like I said, I don't know which Borshev we're going to see. And Yontop were too early in his UFC career to tell. At least, though, at least we have some film on him. He does have 16 fights. Um, but losing in that first round as a, as a 460 favorite, minus 460 favorite, excuse me, not a good look. Here's one that probably won't take long, and I'll try not to talk about it too uh, much because it doesn't take much to break down. Zach Reese taking on uh, Jose Medina. Zach Reese, yeah, the guy that made his debut in Austin and got slammed on his head by Cody Brundage in about uh, a minute and a half. He beat Julian Marquez, turned it around, and uh, beat Marquez in less than 30 seconds. It looks to be about 20 seconds uh, exactly. Six strikes landed. One of them was the KO, and Marquez went down like a bag of potatoes. 127 points is what Reese put up with the 115-point quick win bonus. So he scored 12 points in uh, in that 20 seconds. So 
high volume there. I mean, six strikes isn't exactly high volume, but you know what I mean. Uh, it, it just builds. He, he could have put up 116, but he put up 127. So that's fantastic. Jose Medina, I mean, this dude in his DWCS fight, I mean, I joke with the other guys I do the show with, Brady, uh, on DFS by the numbers, uh, Uncle Weezy and them. They they love to, to hate on Jose Medina in a joking way because he looked uh, pretty bad in that DWCS fight. 24 strikes landed in 15 minutes. That's 1.6 per minute. He allowed almost five uh, strikes a minute. He also got taken down six times, Jose Medina, and controlled for 40% of 15 minutes. Ended up scoring one point per minute. Now, what are our salaries here? If I'm not mistaken, Zach Reese is the second most. He, he's up there. He's 9,200 uh, and then 7K. Do we have a 9,400 this week? We have a 96. Oh, we do have a 95 and then a 92. Okay. So Zach Reese is the third most expensive fighter on the card. Jose Medina. I mean, other than the fact that Zach Reese is relatively inexperienced with only eight professional fights, I'm not too interested in much Medina. I'll have a very small fraction of him, but one, one point per minute is not impressive. And Zach Reese did turn it around and looked great against uh, Julian Marquez. So I'm not, you know, I'm picking Zach Reese to win. I will have some Medina, a very low percentage. I'm not fading him to zero, even though I want to, but I do expect a Zach Reese uh, finish just for fun. Let's go into the Zach Reese uh, numbers here. Where's my, uh, there it is. What's the ITD? Uh, N's ITD is minus 600 here uh, for Zach Reese. So obviously that's on Zach Reese and not, on uh i mean that's pretty much zach reese's money line yeah it is his money line is minus minus 600 so yeah we do like that it's probably zach reese early we said the same thing about tom fucking nolan last week and we all got bit in the ass those of us that played him well, i didn't go 100 percent by any means it was impossible to do that uh but i had too much of him and he ended up with 66 points and at 9800 dollars. so there is an inherent risk here Jose Medina is a newcomer. Zachary's now with two fights under his belt, even though that equates to less than like two minutes. It is some type of UFC experience. So give me Zachary's early 9,200. It's not 98. So I feel a lot more comfortable and the bare minimum of Jose Medina. We're flying through this. We lost the Danny Silva fight. That one was coming up next. So let's take a, a water break. Yeah, it was Danny Silva and Dennis Bazookia. I'm so sorry. I forgot I stacked these cups. You could probably hear me drinking. That's disgusting. There we go. So RIP to the Danny Silva fight. That would have been a good fight. Next fight. This one definitely won't take long because, as I said, I'm a stat boy and I have no stats for the first of the tough finales. Ryan Loader taking on Robert Valentin. Um, if you'll bear with me. I do have this pulled up. So we've got uh, Ryan Loader here. Old boy is six and one professionally. So again, less than 10 fights. I hate putting a bunch of stock in guys that have less than 10 fights, but he does have four knockouts, three in the first round, and then two decision wins, one loss. He was supposed to fight Ty Gwerder, uh, got canceled, beat Leon Shabazian, lost to Troy Green. I mean, he's beaten guys that are one and oh, two and oh. Marcus Gaines was 16, 31 and one when he fought him. So not a lot of experience here for uh, Mr. Loader. Let's click on uh, Robert Valentin, aside from having some uh, awesome tattoos. I mean, just at least on the base of it. If Maybe they mean something terrible, and in which case, I take it back. I have no idea what it means. I just called it awesome. You would think I would know by now to, to not do that. Um, but without knowing what it means, I mean, they're cool They're cool shapes, right? Uh, his nickname is Robzilla, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, but he does have more than 10 fights, 13 to be exact. I'll try to stop, stop scrolling. Uh, three KOs. Six subs, one decision. So who's he beaten? Uh, a bunch of guys, honestly. And I, I'm not the, you know, I'm a casual pretty much when it comes to outside the UFC. Uh, a lot of my focus is the UFC, and not RCC, not Lions FC. I've heard, I, I know what Aries is. I know a lot of guys have fought in Aries, but not really my expertise. I don't know who any of these guys are. I, Ebo, Ebo Aslan. You know who Ebo Aslan is. He's in the UFC currently. Um, he just fought recently, I believe. That's the only one I know. Old boys, 10 and three, like we said. I mean, he's the favorite, I do believe. Let's check the numbers. Check the numbers. Where's he at? Yeah, he's a minus 180 favorite, it looks like. 
What's our ITD? I've already talked about this fight for too long. Minus 180 to finish ITD. So uh, once again, we have an ITD. Whoops, an ITD number. That is the same as, as our money line. Take that with what you will. But I, uh, I'll take Valentin. And without any stats, I'm going average ownership here. 20-ish percent. I'm not getting crazy. And I'm not going too far under. 20, 25 percent. You know, I'll, I'll have more Valentin uh, than Loader. That said... And actually, I don't know salaries yet. That's the thing. I was going to give you the salary. I don't know what it is. Somewhere in the high eights for loader, if I had to guess, 8,800. Do we have an 8,800? We do. 87, 85. I'm just saying numbers on into a microphone right now. We don't have an 8,900. So he could be 89, uh, loader 73, unless they decide to make him 8,379. But the, the minus 180 tells me it's going to be higher uh eight k's next fight four left can you believe it hit the like hit the sub on the dfs army channel you know i'm not the only show here even though i think sometimes the the world revolves around me i'm not the only person on dfs we have a ton ton of experts i'm not even kidding dudes that even sniper dude you should follow this dude just for his prize picks he just posted something today he's up like 850 bucks for the month like in the tens of thousands for the year it's absolutely insane follow him just for that but check out the other sports i mean uh football's about to start back up geeks going ham on that with the whole team baseball's in full swing we're coming up to the postseason always the most exciting part basketball's two months away boys you know we're going to be doing mock drafts and stuff for that uh so be sure to check out every single thing that dfs army offers be sure to do that all right next fight one of my favorites, even though he's not great for DraftKings, Michael Morales, the undefeated Michael Morales, taking on the defeated at uh, 11 times, Neil Magny. I shouldn't say the defeated. Every If you don't like Neil Magny, you go fuck yourself. Um, I mean, maybe not. Maybe he, he called you a name or something. But yeah, Michael Morales, I, I'm going with him. What's his salary here? What are we working with? 9,500, second most expensive fighter on the card. The problem is, guys, with Michael Morales, he started off hot. 117 against Officer Giles. 99 against Adam Fugit in a finish, but then it's 64 points against Max Payne Griffin and 64 points against Jake Matthews. That is a huge, huge problem. Now, let me look up what Neil Magny uh, allows per loss, because as I said, 11 losses in the actually that might be professional losses. How many in the UFC? 10 of them are in the UFC. Um, how many points does he allow per loss? Sorry, I'm so un I'm not, you know, snipe. Sniper, well, I miss you, bud. This this job is so hard. I'm just kidding. I'm I'm just unorganized. Uh, he allows 99.45 points per loss. So Neil Magny, his thing is, he gets finished. Yes, twice by KOTKO, six times by submission. Now this is much like the Vyacheslav Borshev and whoever I said he was fighting guy who's not going to give up takedowns. Morales isn't probably going for subs. This is a striker. He's a stand-up guy. He's not shooting takedowns, although he did land a takedown against Max Griffin. Um, is that the only one? Now I want to see how many takedowns he's thrown. Uh, four. He has attempted four takedowns. Uh, 0.33 landed per 15 minutes there for, uh, for Michael Morales. So that is three more than I would have expected. Um, but this should be a stand-up uh, battle. If anything... Magny might look for something if, if he starts getting hammered, but he usually doesn't really do that. Um, I mean, that's that's not true either. I, I'm going to take that back. He lands 2.17 per minute or per 15 minutes. So he's attempted 144 takedowns in his UFC career. So yeah, if I was, I should have gone with my original sentence. If anyone's going to be attempting takedowns, it's probably going to be Neil Magny after he's getting pieced the fuck up by Michael Morales. Now, Morales is another one where it's all all you're getting is stand up striking. You're not getting non significant strikes. You're just getting those significant strikes at five, six, seven strikes a minute at times. But again, much like the female fighter we talked about to start this off, um, you're not doing anything else offensively like Izzy last week. Uh, you know, no control time, no takedowns for the most part. And you end up with 63, 64 points in a three round win, and you're well over 9K. So, I am going to play some Morales just because Magny loves to get finished. Like we saw last week, uh, uh, Jing Lang Li, 
got finished, had never been KO'd before, and Protez absolutely pieced him up and put him down. So this could be another case. We have a 12-year age gap here. Magni just turned 37 uh, at the beginning of the month. Morales is on the come up, and he really, I think he needs a, a, an exclamation point win. And a finish over Neil Magny would be gigantic for Michael Morales. So I will be playing Michael Morales at the price. I'm just scared that he's going to put up 70 points in a, in a decision win. So I'm hoping that's not the case. Hopefully we get another Carlos Prates type performance and Morales comes out here and finishes a UFC veteran. So give me Morales. Excuse me. And uh, hopefully I don't get stuck with 70. I'm not going to have like 40 or 50% though. I'm probably going to be a little bit a little bit more trepidatious on Morales. Back to back 64s is not good. Next fight. This is a GPP fight. You got to play this one. Edmund Shabazi and taking on GM3 Gerald Mearshart the third. Edmund 9K Gerald Mearshart 7200. Look, Gerald Mearshart is always 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 worth a play in gpps no matter what this guy is the king of not only submissions but third round submissions also getting his ass whooped for two and a half rounds or two rounds or a round and a half whatever the case may be and then finding that late sub when you dip your head too low next thing you know he's fucking triangling you and you're tapping out and you don't know what happened because you were just winning the fight so always 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 play gm3 the problem is if he's not tapping you out he is getting beaten up pretty bad and uh his opponent scores a quite a few amount of points on him so play gerald mearshart for gpps and also you're playing his opponent in this case it's edmund shabazian we do have a decent history of him scoring well when he wins unfortunately he went on quite the losing skid there he's trying to turn it around now two of his last three are wins his only loss is to fluffy hernandez who is one obviously one hell of a fighter not a lot of people are beating Fluffy Hernandez in this weight class. So Shabazian looks like he's turning it around. He got a first-round KO over A.J. Dobson, 118 points in that fight. Mearshart loves giving up points uh, as well. What's his career average? He allows 95.2, but when he's getting KO'd, especially in the first round, he's given up a ton of points. Shabazian averages uh, 109.63 per win and 105.23 per loss. This fight screams GPP. Let's uh, check out the inside the distance numbers. Right now, Shabazian is, is basically a minus 300, three to one favorite. ITD is probably a minus six. It's minus 500. So yeah, definitely a GPP fight. Who am I picking? I don't trust Edmund Shabazian. I still don't trust him. I don't know where he's at in his career. Uh, we're a bit I don't know where the roller coaster is. Are we going up or are we going down? I'm not entirely sure. So I'll be average on him. Mearshart, he's a better than a punt, not a fade, better than a punt, but not like a GPP staple. That said, I will have plenty of this fight. Both guys probably in the 20 to 30% range, if I had to guess. Actually, probably more than that. Probably more than that, to be quite honest. So yeah, love this fight for GPPs on Tuesday night. 834 central time i'm picking edmund shabazian that may change um I'll, i've been trying to wait to do my notes i know a lot of you probably hate it until fridays but i like to do my shows i like to talk through the stuff with people i'm not taking other people's opinions i'm just i'm gathering information i'm going back over my stats and i'm really trying to figure out uh what how i see the fight going so like i said on tuesday picking shabazian let's keep it moving if I can find what spreadsheet I'm on. Two fights left. I believe this is still the co-main event, and we're at 23 minutes. We'll be done in 30, just like I said. Angela over Kill Hill. Love Angela Hill. Uh, everybody loves Angela Hill. 39 years old, guys. Almost 40. She'll be 40 at the beginning of next year. She's 4-1 and one in her last five, taking on Tabitha Baby Shark Ricci. Um, five foot one for Tabitha. 61-inch reach. Also 4-1 and one in her last five. Only loss is to Lupi Godinez, and that was a split decision. Very close fight. She's beaten uh, Viana, Jessica Penne, Robertson, and Tisha Pennington. Um, Angela Hill's beaten Godinez, uh, Dakota Gomez, and Pinero. What are our scores here? Angela Hill's been on quite the tear. In her win against uh, Dakota, 104. Denise Gomes, 108.89, and Luana Pinero, 103.98. Two of those are three-round decisions, and one of them is a, is a second-round submission. 
So Angie is scoring really damn well when she wins. Five points a minute uh, in two of those, and then 3.6 in the second one. Tabitha Ricci, not so much. She actually put up a ton of points against Jessica Penne, but only 93 against Viana, and it only gets worse from there. 86 against Robertson, 74 against Tisha Pennington, and she's been keeping these fights close, guys. Her last two are split decisions. Um, a lot of these times, these women fights are women's fights are close. Angel Hill has not been keeping them close lately, not at all. She's either getting whooped or doing the whooping. So I'm siding probably, oh, man, this is tough. 8,200 for Angela Hill. She is the favorite according to DraftKings and maybe according to uh, uh, to fight odds. What are we looking at here? Where is she? Yeah, she's still a favorite at about one, minus 115, minus 113, something like that. Um, I want to pick Hill, man, but 39, there's a 10-year age gap here. Tabitha Ricci looks good at times, but I mean, she's such an enigma. I don't know what she's going to do or how she's going to score basically ever. Um, she's scoring 95. She's allowing 95. Hill is scoring 88. She's allowing 93. I'll probably be about average on this one. I'm not touching this in cash. I think it's a real 50-50 fight. Um, this probably goes to decision. Most likely you probably don't even need me to say that. I mean, 22 of Angie's 30 fights professionally have gone to decision. Um, and if there is a finish, it's going to be a sub. So you're probably not going to get 10 points for a knockdown. You might not even get five points for the takedown. This might just be, I guess somebody could pull guard here for Christ's sake. Uh, I just don't think it scores. Well, probably that was a very bad grammatical sentence. Um, Chances are, I don't think this scores well. Winner scores 80 to 90. Maybe at eight, 82 and 8K, that's okay. 90 points would be fine. I will be about average on this fight for GPPs. Not touching it in cash. Not at all. All right, guys, here is the main event. I've already said it enough, but I'm going to say it one more time. Hit the like, hit the sub on DFS Army. Get in that Discord, too. There's a ton of discussion going on there all the time. Betting, DFS nonsense everything you could possibly need get over and check it out let's take a main event uh water break mm, every gotta stay hydrated that needs to be colder for sure um all right main event i'm super stoked for my favorite camp a lot of your favorite camp uh favorites camp as well maybe the fighting nerds kyle bahio eighty six hundred dollars taking on jared the Killer Gorilla Cannoneer at 7,600. Um, I love that the fighting nerds have been on an absolute tear. There is one of them that lost. Is it Kanan Krzyzewski? I can't remember. the. There's always one that I cannot remember, uh, but all the rest are just absolutely killing it. They're going ham over at the fighting nerds. Cannoneer is coming off. I mean, he's 2-2 two and two in his last four. Lost to uh, Izzy. Lost to Imavov. Uh, fourth round KO there. Did score three points a minute, ended up with just under 50. My issue with Bahio, and a lot of your issue is, how is he going to score? 5-0 in his last five, that's great. But he was 8,900 against Petrosian, he scored 80 points. He was 9K against Murdoff, 75 points. He was 92 against Abus Magomedov, 68 points. That's fucking heartbreaking, man. You're, that's, that's like playing Tom Nolan at 98, and then he goes to fucking decision with Alex Reyes and doesn't even score 70. I feel like Ralph, uh, my heart, you can see the moment my heart broke in half. Uh, Paul Craig, he scores 96. And then Oleg Sechek, who loves to get finished, uh, he puts up 107. Now, Cannoneer does not love to get finished, although in three of his seven losses, he has been KO'd. Bahio did KO Paul Craig, but this is a different kind of fighter. Uh, Cannoneer is, is not Paul Craig. Paul Craig's going to literally pull guard and, like, go for a three quarter takedown and then try to pull you on top of him. I it's, it's so frustrating being a Paul Craig fan. That's for sure. Uh, but Cannoneer is not going to do that at all. So Bahio is going to have to stay safe on the feet. I think he's got this, obviously the grappling edge. And I think that's exactly where most of this fight is going to play out. Now he is not nine K this week. He's only 8,600. So I feel much, much better about playing Bahio. Also we get 25 potential minutes with Bahio. Cannoneer can definitely go 25 minutes. He went with Marvin Vittori. He went with Sean Strickland, and he went with Izzy Adesanya. Uh, 
you know, in a row. And then his last one with the Imavov, he got put down just before the 18th minute. So he definitely has cardio. He can definitely get backpacked for five full rounds. And Bahio could uh, put up a decent score at 8,600. Now, it might not be 140 points like Pantoja or 170 like uh, Zhang Wei Li. But I think 100 points, 95 points at 8,600. I think we will take that on a 10 fight card uh, that could possibly have even more. I mean, that's me knocking on wood. Fights fall off. So uh, I just looked over just past the 30 minute mark. That is going to do it, guys. I'm picking Bahio. What's my ownership going to be? I'll probably be pretty freaking high on Bahio. As far as stacking, what's Bahio allowing? He allowed two strikes a minute to Petrosian. Less than one strike a minute against Muradov. Wow, the money team guy. Uh, he allowed four strikes a minute against Oleksiychuk, two and a half against Abus, and three against Craig. So if he can avoid getting, you know, if he can avoid the power shots from Cannoneer, I definitely think this goes his way, and he just racks up control time, takedowns, hopefully some ground and pound, hopefully. Uh, maybe we see another sub, who knows. But Cannoneer, definitely play some of him. He is 7,600. I don't think that's too expensive, and he does have the finishing upside. Also, in his uh, last three wins, he is averaging 113 points. A lot of that is the fact that he scored 155 against Marvin Vittori, so that's an outlier. We're not expecting that. Um, but, yeah, I think this is an okay main event to play. As far as stacking, he's scoring three points a minute, five, 2.2, 2.1. No, I don't think he scores enough per minute cannon here, especially if he's getting dominated on the ground for like, th you know, three of every five minutes. I don't think he's scoring well enough to, uh, to warrant a stack. So just play one of them. I'm playing Bahio or I'm picking Bahio, but I will have both of my lineups. I am favoring. I will have much more Bahio than, uh, than cannon here. All right, guys, that's going to do it. All, what, 10 fights up and down in 31 minutes. I really appreciate it. I'm not going to tell you to like and sub again because I already told you to like and sub once. Like and sub. How's that? Um, that's it, man. For DFS Army, for me, Monk, um, as usual, I want all of you to enjoy the fights. So, actually, rewind that. There's no fights next week. We have the week off. But after that, we're coming back with a banger. I don't know what it is. It's probably a banger compared to this one. So enjoy the week off um, and be sure to uh, play responsibly this week so you can win all the money and it'll make up for having no fights next week. So as usual, we want all of you to enjoy the fight. So enjoy and we will see you in the next one.